many devices here. So we're going to analyze this, uh, analyze our circuit with our, uh, what's our uh, first, step. first step that we need to do? Yeah. 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 Let's go back and control on it. Right. Turn our clearance inside there. Okay, then our, uh, our next step is then we want to bring down our uh, stop voltages. And you want to treat both the diodes as if they are an open when they first begin with. So, so, if we were to, so if we were to analyze D1, so let's, we'll take a look at uh, D1 here first. So if I first analyze D1, what's my uh, what's my soft voltage on on my anode side? Yeah, plus 20 volts. And then on my cathode side, what's my soft voltage going to be? Zero volts. So is that diode a go or a no go? Yeah, it's a go. And then it's going to drop. And it's going to drop uh, what per voltage? 0.7 volts. Okay, so we know that one, we said that one's a go. It's going to drop at 27 volts. And now once we analyze this one, we're going to keep that one as part of the circuit now. So if that one's part of the circuit, and now I go and analyze D2, what's going to be my, what's going to be my stop voltage on my, uh, on my cathode side? Yeah, so it's going to act like an open, right? So it's going to drop what for voltage? 20 volts. So yeah, so my soft voltage is going to be my plus 20 volts. And then on my anode side, it's going to be what? Zero volts. So is that guy a go or a no-go? That was a no-go. And then that one's going to drop what for voltage? What sort of voltage? 20, 20 volts. Okay. So then what we, what we need to do then is then we have to go back and verify D1 again. So now we're going to treat diode number two and that one, we already shuffled that out, we're going to assume that's part of the circuit again now. Then we're going to go back and we have to reanalyze D1 because we said that D1 was a go and it was going to drop at 0.7 volts. So now if I, if I, if I bring my voltage and I come up to here, I'm going to measure what for a soft voltage. And I'm measuring across an open. So here's my no go. So am I measuring across an open? Yes. So I'm going to drop up for voltage on my anode side. 20. 20 volts. Okay. Then I come back down and I look at my cathode side. Now we already assumed that this one, uh, we're treating this one as an open. We're going to put this one back into the circuit now. We've already analyzed it. We come back. And I measure what my cathode side is going to be, or my test point B, and what would I measure for voltage? So I measure it across an open still. It's by 20 volts. So now this one here is going to change, and now I have a plus 20 volts here. Because we treated this one as a, treated that one as an open. So. And we also treat this one as an open, so we got our, our plus 20 volts there. So now I got a plus 20 volts on my anode side and a plus 20 volts on my cathode side. Is that diode a go or a no go? No go. Uh, that's a no go. So then we have to, so that one actually gets changed back to a no go. 
And it is going to drop, you know, assuming, depending on what we're looking at or how we're measuring, if we're measuring from test point A, you know, it's going to drop its 20 volts. Okay? It's only going to drop its, because they're both uh, treated as an open, if we look at them, since they're both as an open, from here to here, I would actually measure zero because I'm, because test point B again is loaded up in limbo. From here to here, I'd measure zero, uh, zero volts because test point B again is just kind of hanging out there in the open. So the only way I would get to actually measure my actual 20 volts would have to be from test point A to ground, I'd get 20 volts. From test point B to ground, I'd measure zero volts because B is just kind of floating out there in limbo. If we just kind of took those diodes out of that circuit, we would just kind of see that test point just kind of floating out in the limbo. Now, so we know that uh, we don't have any current flowing through that circuit, right? What can happen though is when we're, so if we're, uh, let's just say these are light emitting diodes, okay? So both these light emitting diodes, they're both a no-go, they're not, they're not lit up. But what would happen is, is that when I'm doing my measurements, and all of a sudden I'm going ahead and I'm measuring from test point B to ground, I'm measuring, the, I'm trying to better figure out what the voltage is across D2 is. What actually ends up happening is, is that I put my meter in there. Here's my voltmeter. And remember, a voltmeter ends up having a resistance, and it's going to have a resistance of approximately 10 mega ohms of resistance. So it's basically looking like that meter has some resistance in there. We know that this diode is always going to be reverse biased, right? We, always, we know that this is always going to be more positive on my cathode side. My anode is always going to be more negative. It's going to be at zero volts. So we know that diode is never going to turn on. And since this one can never turn on, that means that this one can never turn on. But once I hook up my once I hook up my voltmeter up to it, all of a sudden that LED is going to light up. Okay? So sometimes you get false readings because we just made a path. We just shorted out to where we just put some resistance in where that open was, and we created a current path. So if we were to do our, you know, if we were to go back all over again and redo all our soft voltages, we get plus 20 volts here, we get our zero volts here. That dial is going to take its voltage first, it's going to drop our drop to 0.7 volts, that light's going to light up. And since this diode we already know is never going to turn on, we'll just kind of ignore it, we won't reanalyze that one again. All of a sudden, this all of a sudden becomes a goal, this drops 0.7 volts. I'm going to get current flowing through there. So R1 is going to drop, is this one going to drop uh, a lot of the source voltage or or uh, very little of the source voltage compared to the 10 mega ohms? Very little. What's that? Very little. Very little. And so then all my voltage is going to drop across here. So this is going to drop 0.7. Uh, let's just figure it out real quick. So what would be my voltage across R1 and what's my voltage across my voltmeter? So let's just use our, so just use your voltage divider formula. Remember how to use your voltage divider formula? So let's just figure out what the voltage is across R1 is equal to the total res uh, resistance of our R1 divided by our RT times our voltage source.
Mm-hmm. 10 divided by 100 times 20. So what do you get for a bolt of cross bar 1? If you add 100 mega, 10 mega, 100. You get, a, you get an answer? Yeah. That's what you get for a... And if you go by significant digits, it doesn't, it's not effective. Don't put it in engineering notation. No, but it's usually your calculator, but have your calculator just how many I'm getting two things. volts. Micro. Micro, yeah. yeah. So it's 200 micro volts? Yeah. So yeah, you get 200 micro volts going across yeah. R1, so that leaves, so VR2 is going to drop. So just 20 volts minus the 200 micro volts is going to be what? 19 point way out there? Yeah, 9998. 998. There's three nines. Three nines even? Yeah. Yeah, I should have probably made that R1 is a little bigger resistor. So R1, wait, so Thank you. Yeah. Because we can't have right? Well, no, I just, I, well, I should have made this one a little bit bigger so we had a better voltage divider. But anyway, so when you came in, so if this one, let's just go back, and if we made this one, so you can see that there would end up being a voltage drop. The voltmeter wouldn't read your source voltage like you would assume. It's actually going to end up, ideally, in an ideal circuit, that voltmeter would read zero because we know that both those diodes are, are no-go, and test point B is out in limbo. So you're going to go from measuring in an ideal circuit when you analyze it to being zero volts, but then when you really go and actually measure it, you're end up going to measuring your source voltage, close to your source voltage. Okay. So you have to be careful about when you're going in there and doing your measurements on solid state devices because on paper, test point B is going to be at zero volts. But when you go and hook up your voltmeter, you're going to end up reading your source voltage. So you're going to actually think the opposite way of what's really going on with your circuit. And so a lot of times that will happen, especially if we're working on digital circuits. You know, our, our digital circuit's not working. We got an open somewhere going into one of our inputs. All of a sudden we hook up our, all of a sudden we hook up our voltmeter up to it to measure to see what's doing our troubleshooting, we hook up our voltmeter up to it, and the damn machine starts to run. Take away your voltmeter, and all of a sudden the machine shuts down again and it starts to fail. Go ahead and you measure across the failed component, the machine starts to run again. So we have to be careful so you can actually activate inputs and outputs, or activate inputs going into your solid state devices just by putting in your voltmeter, and all of a sudden that machine can go ahead and do some unexpected things. So you have to be careful about when you're hooking up your voltmeter into, into your circuits. And especially if, you, if you're going into a, a critical input where it's not really looking for the input at the time, and all of a sudden you put the input in there, and all of a sudden that machine starts to run, and it's not going to run the way it should be, and all of a sudden things are going to start turning on, you know, conveyors might turn on and start jamming up and stuff like that because you just forced an input to go high. So. So just something to be aware of when you're going ahead and doing your troubleshooting that when you're doing it on paper and you're looking at it and trying to analyze what the problem is, uh, what you get for a reading might be not what it really what you expected. Alright, any questions on that? Does that kind of make sense there? Yeah. I have a question on VR1. How did you get 200 run I got it from Tyler. I don't think it might be 20. But anyway, it was it was the, the principle of the thing. Not so much the numbers this time. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't so worried about the numbers, but just for the the theory of what can happen if we uh, hooking up a voltmeter into a into a circuit. So. Yeah, you get the same effect with a no scope probe. Yep. Because well, it depends. Um, if you're using a ten times probe, what's the resistance of the probe? Yeah. Ten megohm, right? Just like a voltmeter. But we do have thousands of one probes, right? Now we got a thousand, thousand, uh, a thousand mega ohms in there, and it probably won't turn it on because remember these are these are really actually current-driven devices, um, and 
you wouldn't probably get enough current to actually make that diode active. We'll, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be looking more at that when we get into uh, what we call Zener diodes. We're going to be looking at how these are actually really uh, current control devices and stuff like that. And then if we don't have enough current going through there, they'll never turn on. But yeah, if you hook up an oscilloscope, that would be the same thing if you're using a 10 to 1 probe. That's why, that's why we have the 1,000 to 1 probe, so that yeah. we don't affect our circuits just for that exact purpose. Yep. All right. All right, let's go to our uh, lecture six and let's just go uh, to a couple more of those. We won't spend a lot of time on those. Those are definitely exercises on your uh, homework sheet there if you want to practice those. Yeah, now these are just you know, these are these are just kind of exercises so that when you're working with your circuit boards and stuff, like I said, you know, in my circuit in my schematic diagram, you know, I might only really have the test points that are listed in there. You know, these might be sort of you know power supplies and something like that. And then we're gonna have a you know, then a circuit in there. We're not gonna see the actual power supplies, you might not see where that reference where that reference point is. So uh, let's uh, let's just take a look at another one here. Let me find a good one with another. Uh, all right. Now just by now just by looking at it. You know, you should be getting pretty good now that where you're starting to look at these circuits even without drawing out the, the big detailed map of it. But would you consider that, at the first glance at that circuit, would you consider that diode going to be a go or a no-go? A no-go. A no-go, right? Because, um, because the, my negative 30 is more positive than my negative 40, so we already know that we're, so yeah, so we already know that most likely that that diode is going to be a no-go now. And if it's going to be a if it's going to be a no go, then what's it going to do? What's it going to drop for voltage? The source voltage, right? So what's my what's my source voltage across that diode one? So if I were so here's my source voltage, right? It's right at these two points, these are my source voltage for this circuit, right? So what's my what's my source voltage then? If I what's my potential difference between E1 and E2? How many volts? What's my potential difference between those two? Negative 10. 10. 10 volts. So we already know that D1 is going to drop 10 volts. So once we get once we get that visual picture in our head, then we know that we can analyze these circuits pretty quick without drawing them all up all the time. If you wanted to see what that circuit was, we know how many power supplies am I going to need to have here? Two. Two. I'm going to need two. For E1, is this going to be my negative side or my positive side of my power supply? Negative. And on E2, is this going to be my negative side or my positive side? Negative. And we know that they have to be tied together. And then and then where's my, where's my reference point going to be located at? Right between the two. And so we know that the, the voltage for this power supply is going to be equal to what? It's going to be set at what? How many volts? Yeah, or just 30 volts. Yep. We're going to set that power supply for 30 volts, and we're going to set this power supply for 40 volts. Then if I were to put my, put my red lead on E2 and my black lead on ground, I'm going to get bring my red lead up to my black lead. First sign C is negative, so I'm going to get negative 40 volts there. Come up over here. First sign C is going to be negative, negative 30 volts. So that's what your circuit's going to look like. So when you start analyzing these circuits, you're just going to if you see that there's two different voltages, we already know that we're going to have to have two power supplies because we don't see a reference point. Otherwise, we'd see plus or minus zero volts. Then also. Uh, 
Oh, so then, are those series hitting or opposing power supplies? Opposing. Series opposing. Yeah. And which way is my, uh, which way is my current, uh, which way is my current going through my diode? So, it's not. It's not, right? Because we said it was an open. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It's not. There's no current flowing through it. It's a no-go, so it's an open drop from the source voltage. All right. Come a long way since uh, just yesterday uh, when we first uh, did one of these. Okay, 
But yeah, so we can do you know once we get the hang of it and understand what that what that picture looks like, then then we can get a we can do a pretty quick rapid analysis just in our heads, just by doing a quick look at it. If it's critical, though, I'd make sure I draw it all out and stuff. If, if it's a critical thing, you know, just to verify. But you know, if you're just doing a quick troubleshooting of something, you know, we can quick analyze the circuit of what's going on with it just by taking a quick look at it. But when it comes time down down to it, then you kind of, you know, because we might not know exactly where that trouble is, so we might be just doing quick approximations going, oh yeah, these all these voltages look good. You go to the mixture and all those voltages look good, and all of a sudden you come to this one and you go, ah, that one doesn't look quite right, you know, and then you quick do a quick analysis in your head and go, oh yeah, that one looks like that one could be the problem. So then at that point, then what you want to do is go up, because you kind of narrowed it down, you have a pretty good idea that you think it's going to be this one. Then what you want to do is then is you're going to want to go and just verify your approximations, then you're going to you know, draw it all up and, and redo the whole thing, make sure that your, your rapid analysis is, uh, was accurate and that that was the problem area or did, the numbers didn't look quite right. Now it's a no-go, your power supply is backwards. <laughs> yeah. Good catch. Uh, all right, good. I think we have a pretty good grasp on that one. Unless someone wants to see another one. We're doing pretty good on that. All right. Let's just do a couple of the other. This one here, we're going to just do the volt, uh, what the voltmeter reading is. And we won't spend a lot of time on this one. All right, so what's my uh, what's my voltmeter going to read this time? So you have to take a little calculations on it and stuff. So you still have to determine whether that dial is a go or a no go. All right, 
excited we got that one down pretty good there. If not, practice them at home. If you have any questions on them, you know, on your homework ones, you know, just let me know. Yep, same stuff, yeah. Yep, just just some practice stuff up here. Yep, that's that'll be the stuff that'll be, you know, some of those will be on uh, be on the quiz for next Friday there. So there's just some practice ones for you to do, so you're good at it. Alright, let's uh Let's take a look at our, uh, this is going to be one of your labs here, so let's take a look at one of your uh, diode challenge. We're going to skip over that, uh, I'm going to skip, we're going to skip that one with uh, um, the switching diode one. Those are basically, uh, that's the old style of way of that they used to do uh, logic gates, and and ors, but uh, these guys aren't in digital yet, you guys are kind of switched around. I think I'll just throw that off. Normally you guys would have digital to begin with and then you did uh, lab view, but. The logic gates for diodes are, now you might still see it, but. Most of them are being controlled by microcontrollers and logic gates. You get that data with that chapter system stuff as well? Yep. Yep, is there one now? That one should have the diode challenge. If not, no, we'll turn it out a couple. Oh, you have it to me. I know I have it. Which one? Anyone else missing their diode challenge? No. Oh. All right, so this, this diode challenge, it's exactly what it is. It's a, it's a challenge. Um, but again, it's kind of like a, it's just another exercise of how to analyze circuits. And so when we're looking at uh, circuit boards and stuff, and we're trying to troubleshoot uh, circuit boards and circuits, it just kind of gives us a way of, you know, how do we logically think through the, through the circuit. So when you're analyzing it, when we're putting on uh, putting into our inputs, when it says it's zero, that just means that it's zero volts, or it's a ground, it's our reference point going to ground. If it's a one, that means it's got plus 10 volts, and then our voltage source is going to be 12 volts. So let's take a look at. Um, I think I do number three. So, yeah, we'll do, we'll do number three. So we'll do a little bit more of a complicated one. So let's do number three. So A, A's got 10, and B's ground. Yeah, I got it. I'll be right back. I got some uh, worksheets here. Yeah, I think, you know, if you need an example three. 
<laughs> yeah, so you may not get to them, but I got them. Now, this will challenge the best of us. I normally, in fact, I normally practice this myself at home before I do this. Uh... All right, so, so on each one of those circuits, what I want you to do is I want you to do both the the current paths and the polarities of your circuit. And remember, sometimes you get, you're going to have to reanalyze those circuits as you know, certain ones turn on and off. That's going to change your voltages. It's going to change your soft voltages. And so these diodes, when I first apply power to these, all these diodes are going to act like an open. And then what's going to happen is, depending on what our inputs are, what's going to happen is, is that and we don't know which diode is going to turn on first. So it doesn't matter which one we analyze first, because that's the same way in the real life. It's, we don't know which one's going to turn on. So what can actually happen is I first turn on that power, all these diodes act like an open. And then one or two or three of them are going to start to, well, two for sure. No more than two are going to have to be turned on. But one of them might just all of a sudden get forward biased and it's going to turn on, and then that's going to change all your voltages. And then, once that changes all the voltages, then another diode might turn on. And then that one's going to affect the circuit, and that's going to change the way that circuit looks. And then that's going to change all that voltage, and then another diode might turn off. Now one that was originally turned on could turn back off again. And then if that one turns off, then that's going to change all the voltages again. And then, you know, this one might turn off, and then this one might turn on, and then we analyze it all through, and then we find out that becomes a stable circuit. So sometimes you know, all these three diodes can be turning on and off until it gets all stabilized out, and then all of a sudden it's going to come into a stabilized area. So you're going to have to redo it several times and, you know, kind of look at it and reanalyze it and stuff. That's a fun little uh, work here. I mean, it's kind of, it'll kind of challenge the, the best of us. Then remember that we always are talking, you know, potential difference. So I'm kind of giving you some hints here, you know, there's always, you know, that potential difference. You know, if I have... Kind of our simple little circuit here, you know, if I have negative 5 volts here and negative 10 volts here, we know that my we know that my negative 10 is more negative, right? So we know that my current is going that way. So you always are constantly looking at, you know, what is that potential difference between these two points? That's going to determine the current going through these through this direction, you know, through your through your resistors. So pay attention to the potential difference between when you're looking at voltages that you're for your soft voltages, you know, what's that potential difference and then what's that current going through there when you're calculating out your PL. Take a look at which way that current is going through those resistors. Alright, so let's just take a look at one so we can kind of see what's going on. So we said we'll do number three. I think that's the one I normally do. So number three A is what uh, what is that one set for? Ten volts. Ten volts. That one's got plus ten volts. And then B is uh, ground? Open. Or zero? Open. open. That's an open? Yeah. Uh, let's see, I'm going to change that. That's a Number six? Five. Oh, six, yeah. Six, let's do six. Oh, uh, I don't want to do six. No, I don't want to do six. That one I like to do. <laughs> <laughs> They're all good. I don't want to give up any of them. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, let's, yeah, let's add three. Let's just, uh, 
I don't want to give up any of the good ones for you, especially if you guys like the challenge. Let's do, uh, yeah, so we'll, uh, go get the bear from the circuit. Yeah, yeah, we'll do number, so we'll do number, we'll do number three. So we'll do number three and then uh, I'll give you the other one. So, because that's still going to be, so how am I looking at these circuits? Again, it's kind of like that, that previous lecture that we just did, you know, how are we looking at this circuit? You know, what, is it, what does it look like? All right, so let's uh, let's take a look at number three here. George me. Yep, so then V's open, right? So that one's just gonna. So is that one ever gonna even turn on? No. 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 All right, so let's take a look at uh, number three here. So what's my uh, what's my first step that I want to do? Circle the active components. Circle the active components. So we're gonna circle the active components and put our inside clarity on it. All right, then what's my uh, then what's my next step? Yeah, treat them like an open. Uh, what's uh, what's uh, what do I have for a voltage source? Twelve volts. Twelve volts. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna treat them as an open. And then what's my next step? Yeah, so, so we're going to just pick one, right? So we're going to pick one and then we're going to figure out what our soft voltages would be across any one of them. So let's just do the most logical one. Let's just start out with D1. So you're always leading your black lead on ground. That one's always going to stay on ground. So on my anode side, what am I going to have for voltage, soft voltage on my anode side? 10 volts. Plus 10 volts. And don't forget your clarity because that's going to make a big difference whether if you... You know, remember, you got to have your clarities. Make sure you're saying your clarities. Okay, so that one's going to be 10 volts. And then what's my soft voltage on my cathode side then? Plus 9 volts. Plus 9 volts. Right, because we have, all these are open, but we still have a voltage divider, right? Yes. And each one of these are going to drop 3 volts. 3 volts. And so our soft voltage then to begin with then is going to be plus 10 on this side, on the anode side, that's just my source voltage, reference to ground. And then my 9 volts, because I know that my clarities across these right now are, and each one is going to drop 3 volts. So you want to put in your voltage drop so you can see it. And if I brought my red lead down, if I Black lead, so we're measuring this test point right here, or this spot on the voltage divider. I got plus three, plus three, plus three. So yeah, so I get nine volts going across diode one. Now is that uh, diode a go or no go? It's a go. Go. It's a go. And it's going to do what? Drop, drop, seven, drop point point seven seven volts. volts. And it's going to drop 0.7 volts. Alright, so now we got our, so now we know that diode is going to drop 0.7 volts. Now what we need to do is now we got to analyze another diode. So we'll just go right down to diode number two. We're going to treat that one as an open. We're going to treat this one as a go, and it's going to drop its 0.7 volts. So we're going to treat that one as a go. So now, what's my voltage from this point here? What's my voltage going to be on my cathode side? 10 volts. 10 volts. How is it 10 volts? Make sure you use your clarities. Okay. Then what's my What's my voltage on my anode side going to be now? Negative nine. Okay, so 
Well, you're going to let's make sure. So let's go back up and let's take a look at dial number one again. So which way is my current flowing through this dial? From left to right or right to left? Right to left. Right. Left to right. Left to right. Yeah, more negative to more positive. So it's going this way. So my clarity across is like this. Okay. So we want to know what that. So we want to know what that voltage is on my anode side. Okay, that's going to be the same point as here, right? Okay, so now we're going back to that previous lecture. So we know we want to find out what that voltage is at this point. Now remember, I said all these voltages kind of change, right? All of a sudden the diode turns on and all these diodes change. All these resistors end up changing different voltages now because the diode turned on. It changed the whole circuit. But one thing that we know that did change is that this diode is still a goal and I might still have 10 volts. <coughs> So to save yourself some time to try to figure out what's going on here, just go through what's the known. So we know that if I come up and I bring my red lead up to my black lead, my first sign I'm going to see is a negative 0.7 plus positive 10 is going to give me what? 9.3. Positive 9.3 volts. Okay. So this on this side now, this is going to be a positive. 9.3 volts. Okay? Did everyone see that? Is that, that? That's kind of just like what we did. It's a, just by making a putting in a voltage divider in there, it just made it a little bit more complex. But basically we know that this diode turned on with a go. And so we know that it had to drop its 0.7 volts. We always know that we got a constant 10 volts power supply. So all we did is we just brought our resin. And so if we can, you know, so it's basically, let's just, sometimes, you know, it's easier if we draw that circuit in there. So we know that's what that circuit's going to look like. Put my black lead on my ground, which is the same as this one. Start off here and look, figure out what my soft voltage is. I'm going to just come up around. Got a negative 0.7. Come around. And then I got a positive. We know that this is 10 volts. So I got a negative 0.7 plus a positive 10 volts, and so I know that I'm going to have a positive 9.3 volts there. Okay, so now we're going to analyze that number two. So we know that we got, is my cathode more positive than my anode? No. Yes. Yes, so is that diode a go or no go? No go. That's a no go. So that was going to be a no go. And it's gonna, and it's gonna, and it's gonna do what? What's the voltage across that dial gonna be then? 0.7 volts. Still gonna be 0.7 volts, right? Because it's in parallel with the other one that is on. It's still off, still gonna drop to 0.7 volts because it's in parallel with that other one. It's gonna, those two, those two dials are always gonna have to have the same voltage because they're in parallel. Okay, so now that one's going to drop 0.7 volts. Even though it's still no go, it's going to drop 0.7 volts. So then what you want to do then is go back and then see if that affected the change of your first one that you analyzed. So what's my, what's my new soft voltage? Uh, so, so is this one, is this one going to, let's see, I don't know say So if I go back, we know this is a no go, right? So this is not in the circuit anymore, so we're still going to have our positive 9 volts then from our first previous analysis because this one's not affecting the circuit any. So if I go back and look at the soft voltage back to that one again, that one's still going to be a positive 9 volts. And the soft voltage on this side is still going to be a positive 10 volts. So we know that it stabilized out. Like I said, it's kept on going back and forth. We just know that this is always going to be a go. This is always going to be a no go. And then it just stabilizes itself out. All right, so now, now once you get that, now what we have to do is figure out what V out is. That's dropping point seven on the no go. How is it not affecting the circuit? Because it's reverse bias, it's it's measuring the source voltage of that parallel circuit, right? So it's just in parallel with this one. Even though it's not turned on, even if I take that diode out of that circuit and I put a voltmeter across here. I'd measure 0.7 volts, right? Because it'd be the same as me just going and bringing my leads up to this one. 
So here I'm measuring my 0.7, right? And I'm not leaving the wires. It's still the same wires. And I come down and I'm still measuring the 0.7 volt. The only difference is that it's an open, not a, not a gulf. Okay? Yep, so it's just measuring the, it's just measuring across the open. All right, before we go any farther, do you want to see that one over again? Just go start over and do it again, or you want to, are you good with it? All right. All right, so let's move on. So then what we need to do now is we want to figure out, so what we want to get for an answer then is we want to figure out what a V out is. So here's, uh, here's, here's my approach to it. So what I would do is I would start out, I know that this diode is going to affect that voltage. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see what this voltage is. Even though I'm not asking for it, look and see what